Hello everybody and welcome to the latest instalment. You'd have to excuse me throat, I've got quite a sore throat. It's all the talking I did yesterday on all my videos, but uh, there we go. Crack on. So, uh, first of all, thank you for all your likes and your comments and your subscribes and your follows. It really does mean a lot. Um, find me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and uh, my website johnkid.co.uk so i'm just going to start a rough horizon with my flat brush notice i'm using uh using it flat just to create some patterns and shapes on the horizon there's no planning involved i just did it it's just a case of moving my arms about and then uh, i'm just going to use my uh, long handle brush just to add some titanium white just onto the horizon just to make some interest in the sky and break that horizon up oh I do love that Payne's grey I'm also using a bit of sap green with carmine red mixed into it as usual No straight lines at all with clouds. You'll notice I'm wearing headphones again. You can't be listening to music when you're painting. It allows you to be more free, be more expressive and get, get lost in what you're doing. Not be distracted. more swirls and shapes in the sky all painted from the imagination of course as usual suppose what started me off being creative it, it must have been at secondary school in the very early 90s I used to be a bit of a buggeroo at school I have to confess I used to get into all sorts of bother mainly for attention that, that was back when uh, we didn't have educational psychologists and all the rest of it I suppose if I was like that now, I'd have been diagnosed with ADHD and all sorts of things. But I used to get to all sorts of bother. And uh, my head of upper school, I suppose, was called Mr. Wallace. Ian Wallace, his name was. And uh, he never shouted, but the look in his eyes and the tone of his voice was enough. He used to scare the living daylights out of us. One of his uh, catchphrases was, uh, Woe betide. He used to go, go, Woe betide, you come into this office again, and things like that. When he never knew what woe betide meant, but uh, the ambigu ambiguity scared us more when he said uh, woe betide. So I think it helped that we didn't know. So anyway, I was I was in detention with Mr. Wallace one day, and uh, Mr. Wallace just so happened to be uh, head of art as well. So uh, as well as being the disciplinarian figure in the school, he was also very creative. And one day, uh, I was in detention in a classroom, and. Uh, Mr. Wallace was there and he slammed a great big lump of clay down in front of me. Almighty bang and I leapt out of my skin. And he said, right, Mr. Kid, I want you to make me a pot. And woe betide, you haven't made me a pot when I come back. And I was terrified. So off he went for half an hour and I sat and made him a pot. And uh, he said, oh, it's very good, Mr. Kidd. 
um, I want to see you this time tomorrow lunchtime and we'll do the same again and I hated playtime I hate absolutely loathed lunchtime so that was when I got into most trouble so uh, yeah I tootled off along and he'd repeat the process he'd slam a great lump of uh, clay down on the table and off I'd go and over months you know he uh, he nurtured me and worked on me and uh, I was creating pots all the time and he even uh, one day sat me up on the wheel you know you press the button and it sends the clay spinning round a couple hundred resolutions a minute and uh, I was churning out pots that way and I think if it wasn't for Mr Wallace I won't be doing this now because I ended up uh, ended up doing quite well at uh, ceramics in during my GCSEs so I've definitely got M Mr Ian Wallace to thank so if you're out there Ian Wallace let me know because I've uh, been trying to get in touch with you but I don't know how to start don't know how to get all your details but anyway here we go I've been rambling on for six and a half minutes and all of a sudden we've got a an all right painting all from my imagination as usual all from uh, my time in the Peak District all my memories living around there and uh, on the left hand side on the horizon is an interesting feature it's uh, reminiscent of um, Kerber Edge and Fogart Edge up that way and if you've been to Fogger Edge, you know what I mean. It's a lovely place. It's uh, incredible. And I suppose that hill on the far right-hand side, that could so easily be somewhere like Mantor, near Castleton. And again, if you've been there, you know what I mean. If you haven't gone to the, gone to the Peak District before, it's well worth a visit. It's a stunning place. I think I've left a large part of uh, my heart in the Peak District. I've moved away five years ago and uh, I miss it dearly. So, nice, nice big expressive movements with my rake brush. Owing to the fact that uh, I've got my headphones and I'm listening to music. Because the difference from yesterday's video, I didn't have music on. My movements weren't quite as free yesterday. So nice big movements. Let's create some movement lines and patterns and shapes. No straight lines in nature. When I was uh, studying for my MA in Fine Art, um, I was sat in a lecture and we were asked by the lecturer can anyone tell me what uh, art is and not not a single hand went up and I hadn't a clue you know even though I was uh, in postgraduate study in fine art I didn't know what art was so it's uh, mildly embarrassing until um, one day I went over to London and went round the Tate's and National Portrait Gallery and various other places of repute and uh, during my studying I'd been studying the work of Francis Bacon and um, lo and behold I walked into one of the rooms in the Tate and staring at me in my face was huge three big Francis Bacon works 
which were titled uh, Three Figures at the Base of a Crucifixion. Quite ominous name. And immediately my hair just stood on end. It was uh, it was an incredible feeling. Because, you know, I've been read up on uh, Francis Bacon, who was terribly abused when he was growing up when he was a child and it, it scarred him for the rest of his life so I, I knew you know from reading up on him something of the pain that he uh, went through even even though you know it's, it was just through writing you know not from personal experience so yeah my hair stood on end and you, you could literally see the pain the torment in each little brush stroke as he painted all those years ago and uh yeah i i even filled up you now as i stood there in the gallery it was heaving with people but it was it was as if it was just me and francis bacon i couldn't hear a thing behind me it was it was weird it was very strange profound experience and from that moment on i knew exactly what art was and it uh Art just grabs hold of you by your balls and drags you into a different place altogether, far removed from uh, the stresses and strains of modern life. And uh, art could be anything. Obviously, it could be a painting, could be a photograph, could be music, could be dance, could be just a little sound or a shape anything that uh, gives you that quality of feeling that uh, that I had at the Tate on that day. And I think that's why us artists create art. It just uh, transports you elsewhere for a brief moment in time. Takes you away from uh, whatever you're feeling. Great therapy. So we uh, just added some drama into the sky. Nearly done, actually. It's very much getting there, and it hasn't taken long at all. And there's my uh, well-known bird that's just uh, materialised in the sky. Oh, excuse me. Hiccups. You'll, you'll find that bird in most of my paintings. If you don't believe me, look. Totally subconscious with my headphones on. You see a uh, little bit of... Uh, yellow a bit of a smudge on the right hand side has gone into the sky totally by accident but it doesn't matter Yeah, if, if you ever want to see Francis Bacon's work, if you go to the, the Tate in uh, London, I'd definitely recommend it. Not just Francis Bacon, but anybody, you know. You can't beat seeing works of art in the flesh. You really can't. And the, the National Portrait Gallery is just incredible. You, you know, you, you walk in rooms and there's canalettos that are just vast. It has needed scaffolding to paint them. Just enormous. It's absolutely mind-blowing. And it's as if they were painted yesterday. It's quite a surreal feeling seeing uh, the masterpieces, the constables and Turner and Picasso, Matisse, 
and seeing the actual work in the flesh and knowing that uh, they're, they're literally their fingerprints on the work all those years ago. You know, even if you don't enjoy art, it's you know it's uh, it's well worth a visit. I'd love to go again. I could uh, I could spend days in a gallery. Some nice uh, nice features going on. I will call that Kerber Edge actually on the left. It's quite nice. Yeah, and on the right, Mamto. It could be Loose Hill. It could be Wind Hill. One of them. Yeah, as you know, my paintings are normally a mixture of different locations in the Peak District. So we're nearly at the finishing touches, just put a little detail on with my rake. Yeah, it's looking alright. If you can hear a little pitter-patter of feet, that's one of my dogs moving across the wooden floor, so my apologies if that picks up. A little bit more detail going in, a few scratches and scrapes. Yeah, quite pleased with that. I'm reaching that stage where you know, get that little instinctive feeling that it's finished. A bit more yellowing just to pull the eye through the foreground a bit. trees and things going in could be trees could be buildings who knows so far so good few walls and patterns and shapes pew, pew. don't know I went pew, pew, then sound effects pew, pew, pew. little lane or road Bring out uh, the edge a bit. Yeah. Very pleasing. I enjoyed that. Yeah, it does make a big difference with headphones. That's my uh, paint tube. Just put in some uh, suggestions of pathways and walls in. Just scratches the paint off. A bit more detail on that vanishing point in the distance. 
few trees and buildings and things. Yeah, I think we're almost just about there. And as I said before, thank you so much for all of your likes and your comments and your follows. It really does make a difference. Don't forget to subscribe or follow me on Facebook. And visit my website as well, junkhead.co.uk. And there'll be plenty of more films like this coming. I think I'll be filming every time I paint. I do enjoy it. Last finishing touches. Yep, definitely uh, I think we're there. Nice one. Jobs are good and thank you so much for taking your time watching the film and uh, I will see you next time without a shadow of a doubt thank you very much bye bye